What's up guys? I'm Mitch Stam with Bluff Country Outdoors and this is the story of Johnny's Buck. So the story of Johnny's Buck starts back in 2019 when Johnny Walker, the person that the buck is named after, actually found his uh, right side of his shed. Actually a really unique rack too, a little sticker off his G2 here. Got nice swooping beams and I mean he was only a two and a half at the time but he was showing characteristics of a buck that could be something special. And then in the spring of 2020 my dad found this side, his right side off of him and then the neighbor actually found this side off him and was fortunate enough to get that side from him so he got the match set from him as a three and a half year old buck. Just a awesome three and a half year old with cool genetics this inside point right here after getting him in this year you knew he could really turn into something special and uh we're looking forward to seeing what he would do in uh 2021 so then shed year of 21 comes around and uh he turns into this guy uh he was a mainframe nine pointer with two kickers he's a little kicker off his main beam right here and another one off his g2 after finding this side, I guessed him to be probably around like 165, 170 as a four and a half year old. And in that year, I probably would have targeted him, but I was after another buck that I called Dozer on a different farm and uh, just had all my focused on him since he was a year older and maybe just a touch bigger too. But nonetheless, awesome four and a half year old buck. So the summer of 2022 rolls around and just like every year around the 4th of July, I start getting all of our cameras out and we start preparing our sets for the next year and get our water holes in that haven't been put in in the spring and sit back and see what we get on camera. So the first couple pictures of Johnny's buck that I got were a pretty special moment. My heart actually dropped when I was thumbing through the pictures and looked at him and saw the four different brow tines and just what he turned into from the year before was actually ridiculous. Just goes to show you what they can do from four to five. And uh, going through those pictures, immediately I was hooked. So late September rolls around and he's actually pretty visible in daylight. And I, was, I knew that if we had the opportunity at him, there was a food plot on top of the hill not too far away from here was bedding that we could get in and out pretty easily. and. First good cold front rolled around and I called up my buddy Jake Eden, told him we were heading out to the tree stand. He's like, I'm there, let's go. So we headed out. We actually had a really good night that night, but didn't see Johnny's buck. We saw another three and a half year old that we called Warty because he had a bunch of warts on his neck and stuff. But uh, with this cold front being around for the next couple days, I knew I was going to hit it pretty hard. So the next night, September 22nd, uh, little did I know that would probably be the best night of early season hunting that I've probably ever had. And here you go. Take a look for yourself at the footage. Well, it's September 22nd today. It's about 445. We got in here a little earlier than last night. There was a couple deer and turkeys in the food plot already when we got here and bumped them off a little bit. So hope that hope it's early enough that it didn't disturb too much. Uh, hoping we can see Johnny's buck tonight. He was on camera last night out in the bean field about probably 200 yards away, but that was at like 1 a.m. But he was also with the buck that we saw last night called Wardy. So I don't know. You never know. With the beans turning yellow, I'm thinking he's gonna come to the clover, but just gonna have to sit back and see, so stay tuned.
So after that awesome encounter with him, I pretty much was set on him. I was like, oh my God, he's bigger than what I even thought. So I knew pretty much from there on out, late September, I was going to try to hunt him almost every day that I could because the year before I had him on camera up till like maybe September 7th or so, and then he disappeared until late November. So every chance that I could get with the right wind, I'd get out there and try to get a shot at him. So that night, that buck actually came in nine, yard, nine yards like you saw in the footage and I just couldn't get myself to shoot him with Johnny's buck being around. Uh, after that, I pretty much knew it was either Johnny's buck or nothing. So after that night, the year kind of flew by. I'd, I'd been making pretty regular appearances over at Johnny's farm where I had been seeing Johnny's buck, but just no, no cell camera pictures, no daylight pictures of him at all. I'd get a random picture of him like every five nights maybe, but it'd be middle of the night, checking scrapes, just out and about, and uh, kind of lost hope at my chances on him for the year, to be honest. So October 27th was actually the next time that I'd seen Johnny's buck. All right, it's October 27th. It's about 3.30 or so. Just got out and settled into the stand. We're back again after Johnny's buck. It's been a while since I've seen him. It's actually been a month since I've seen him last, but he's kind of disappeared on camera, so it's like, where do you go sit for him, really? But you just got to get lucky this time of year, so going to get in as many sits as I can at night for him because our morning spots just aren't the best, I don't think. But we're sitting over a water hole tonight. Uh, with any luck, we'll get him to come by, so fingers crossed.
a yearling was coming into the water hole, slowly came down, took a drink, looked back, and as soon as he looked back, he just took off. I was like, uh-oh. I grabbed my bow right away, and I pulled up my binox, and I could see Johnny's buck just slowly making his way down the ridge, and I'm like, oh, man. So I pulled up my phone, checked out. There was like maybe two minutes of legal shooting light left, and I knew that I wasn't going to get a shot at him, just how slow he was walking. He ends up coming in within probably 40 yards, just walking back and forth at the same trails that the does that came in probably a half hour before that on. And uh, he made his way slow but sure to the water hole. The water hole was like 18 yards away. He was sitting at 18 yards for probably 10 to 20 minutes, just slowly making his way out. And then after that, he made his way out to the field. And I got nervous because I didn't want to get down and spook him from the field. So I actually called Johnny the guy that lives at the farm up and uh, he came up and picked me up with his truck. So the next couple days I hunted that farm both morning and night just in search of Johnny's buck but wasn't having any luck and wasn't really seeing much either. So October 30th rose around and I decided to take the morning off because I've been hunting that farm pretty pretty hard morning and night for the last probably five days and uh I decided to go over there and check some trail cameras and move a couple around and just try to get in his wheelhouse of where he where he was going to be in the next couple weeks because I knew I was going to hit it pretty hard so we went over there uh actually called my dad up and Johnny and we went out that day and actually refilled the water hole too because I knew it was a, it was a spot that I was probably going to be hunting quite a bit in the next couple weeks So we get done there, fill the water hole up, move some cameras around, head back home, go watch some football, sit down, editing some more pictures that I'd taken and uh, took my dad out hunting, got back to the cabin and as soon as I sat down to edit again, boom, there he was. I got a picture of him uh, following a doe. I got the picture of the doe and then him probably a couple minutes after that. As soon as I got that picture, I just, I lost it. I got up. Text the group chat right away. I was like, oh my God, there he is. I couldn't believe it. We were out there making racket, just going all, pretty much around the whole farm, just moving cameras and stuff. I just couldn't believe he was out there in broad daylight. So I packed up my stuff, got ready, and uh, headed off to the farm. After a mad dash and a mad scramble, we made it back up into the tree. We are literally just here filling up this water hole all day today and moving blinds and checking cameras and stuff, but there's a doe in heat right now. I'm pretty sure of it, so you never know what's gonna happen, so stay tuned. I'll be on the edge of my seat all night. <laughs> Let's go. So about an hour passes and I hadn't seen anything yet, but uh, all of a sudden I hear some chasing up on the top of the ridge, so I grab my bow right away, grab my camera, camera arm, and point it over in that direction. After a little bit, I saw a little fawn come through, which was a nubbin buck. Then I saw the doe. Then right after that, Johnny's buck was walking right underneath the ridge, kind of trying to cut her off. And I, I couldn't believe it. There he was. So the fawn, after a while, they stood up on that ridge for a while and that fawn slowly made its way down the ridge and worked its way into the water hole. 
So I took my camera, my camera arm, and kind of just set it up at the pond, thinking that the doe and Johnny's buck were gonna were gonna do the same thing. The slowest I've ever seen deer walk in my life. They just slowly make their way down the ridge from probably about 100 yards out, working their way kind of within range. The doe kind of skirted around and went probably on a trail 60 yards away, but Johnny's buck was kind of angling on a trail that I had uh, marked off with my rangefinder at around like 35, 40 yards. Go down, go down. Go down. Come on. Johnny, we got. <laughs> Can you take this? Oh. Yeah. Let's Come on, Johnny, let's go. Johnny. You want me to film? Drive up. It's going. Oh. I see a white belly. I see a white belly there. Oh my God. I see an arrow right there. You went that far? The hill. Right there's a the stand. Where that luminoc is. Holy Can you make this scrape? No, I would do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Same goes 20 as it is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we did it, Dad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we did it. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Wow! We're trying to get stuck. <laughs> oh my God! Get behind, get behind him, him, Mitchell. Oh my God! He won't recognize me with a hat on. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> we did it! Wow! Uh, lucky as hell today! Wow! <laughs> oh my God! Third time's a charm, I guess. 13, 14 pointer at least. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah! Holy cow! 
Look at that guy. Unbelievable. The mass. Do you think you're gonna beat that 170 line? <laughs> <laughs> God, right through there, right stop. through the heart. There he be. Look at that, Johnny. Now that's gotta be a full body mount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get up along on the Holy. other side of him. <laughs> Holy. What do you say, Johnny? Here's Johnny's buck. <laughs> Look at that. All right, one, two, three, let me know. Not bad. <laughs> Look at the camera. We you did it. Birds. <laughs> we finally did it. <laughs> Johnny, smile. <laughs> all in all, I can't thank Johnny Walker and my dad enough. It's just all the work that we did on the farm that year. Obviously, I wasn't the only one doing all the work. My dad's always around helping me put up tree stands, putting in all the ponds and stuff. And Johnny Walker's out there planting all the food plots and stuff because he lives on the farm and he can just go out and plant it. And he does an awesome job. I can't thank him enough. Uh, just truly blessed to be able to hunt a deer of this caliber and just can't believe I actually got my hands on him and got it all on film for you guys to see. So pretty blessed and I don't know if I'll be able to top this one for a while, but I'll definitely be trying. <laughs>